If you're trying to unlock Dark Aether, you've come to the right place. Because I've gotten unlocked not once, but twice. Once on keyboard and mouse, and once on controller. So it's safe to say I know my way around this grind. So I'll be going over everything you need to know about grinding camos in Cold War Zombies. But if you're looking for something specific, time seems to be linked in the description below. Also, we have a Discord. So if you're looking for people to grind camos with, talk about zombies with, or just hang out, the link to that is also in the description below. To start us off, we'll be going over everything you could do before hopping into a game. First, let's go over loadouts. Zombies loadouts are a little different from multiplayer, but they're pretty simple. You got two options, weapon, Field upgrade. That's it. For your weapon, choose whatever one you want to work on. No bad choices here, except you, bitch. But there is a bad choice in the field upgrade department, and that's energy mine. All it does is just drop a little spermoid on the ground that just creams on anything that gets near it. Besides that, the rest of them work pretty well and won't take too many kills away from you. But by far, the most efficient field upgrade is Ring of Fire. Ring of Fire does exactly what it sounds like. Creates a Ring of Fire on the ground, and it boosts your damage for its duration. Why is it good? Well, you can upgrade it to be insane with Aether Crystals. More on those later. But once you have enough crystals and you upgrade it, the ring can block enemy projectiles, and it takes ammo from your reserve pool instead of your magazine. This means less time spent reloading, more time getting kills. This is my main recommendation for people grinding camos in zombies, but if you're a newer player or not confident in your ability to survive until you get gold viper, I have a few alt, 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 other options you can try. Aether Shroud is a great field upgrade if you find yourself getting cornered a lot or just want to have an oh shit button. Basically what it does is turn you into a ghost who can't be seen by zombies for a short period of time. And with upgrades, it'll automatically reload your weapon, teleport you forward, and increase your movement speed as well as let you store two of them instead of just the one use. A similar field upgrade to this is Frenzied Guard. Frenzied Guard forces all enemies in the area to target you for its duration, but only your armor will take damage during this time. With upgrades, it can repair your armor to full on use and repair your armor 10% for every kill you get. It can make you invincible by blowing up any normal zombie that touches you, and it can slow zombies all the way down to a walk when activated. However, it does have a slow recharge time, but a faster alternative to this is Tesla Storm. Set it right this time. Tesla Storm surrounds you in electricity that stuns and deals minimal damage to any zombie that gets close. With upgrades to it, you can increase the damage and duration of the field upgrade's effects, as well as make it effective on special and elite zombies. Now, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of useful field upgrades other than the ones mentioned, but I believe these to be the most efficient for grinding camos. Now, let's get into that upgrade thing I was talking about. Upgrades are added boosts and benefits to weapon classes, field upgrades, perks, and ammo mods. To upgrade, you need to collect Ethereum Crystals, and there are three kinds. Raw, refined, and flawless. The first three tiers for everything take raw crystals. The amount you'll need to upgrade corresponds to the tier that you're upgrading to. For example, tier one upgrades take one raw crystal, tier two takes two, tier three takes three, you get the picture. Tier four takes, you guessed it, four crystals, but this time you need refined crystals. And tier five takes five flawless crystals. Now, how do you get these crystals? You can get them by reaching round milestones and round based zombies, completing waves and outbreak, and you can earn extra by exfilling in either mode. The higher round or wave that you get to will yield more crystals. You'll get raw crystals on lower rounds, and as you progress into later rounds, you'll start getting refined and flawless. The best way to grind these crystals is to play Outbreak. Now, I'm not sure on the exact rates, but completing about six waves and exfilling, you should get enough crystals to max out any skill you like. I recommend you do as many events in the first wave or two as you can to get your weapon pack a punch and pick up a few perks. But after that, all you gotta do is rush each objective and warp to the next world. If you're efficient with this, it should take around an hour to an hour and a half. Now, what should you look to upgrade once you have your crystals? First, you should upgrade one of the previously mentioned field upgrades. Then you should focus on perks. There are a few to pick, but in order, here is what I believe to be the most important perks to upgrade for camo grinding in zombies. Juggernog, Quick Revive, Deadshot, Speed Cola, Stamina Up, Death Perception, Mule Kick, PhD Slider, Elemental Pop, and Tombstone. Everything below the red line here should be held off on upgrading until you max out more important skills. But here's why I think these perks are the best for grinding. When you upgrade Juggernog, you get added health, reduced status effects, additional armor from plate pickups, increased armor durability, and when fully maxed out on what would be a lethal hit, armor and health is taken down to one instead of going down. All these things keep you alive longer, meaning that you can grind camos for longer. When you upgrade Quick Revive, you get faster health regen, and when fully maxed out, getting a kill while down will pick your sorry ass back up. This is also good for staying alive. There are other upgrades you get when fully maxing out this perk, but there are more useful when playing with others. 
but I'm making this guide with solo players in mind. When you upgrade Deadshot, you get a 100% increase in critical hit damage when an enemy is at full health, 50% increase in armor damage, reduced hit fire spread, increased critical bonus damage to 10%, and when fully maxed out, each consecutive hit on the same enemy deals 2% more damage until it caps out at about 20. But if you play on controller, you might put this at the very top priority of things to upgrade because this basically gives you auto aim. Once you have this perk, all you gotta do is tap your aim down sight button and it will lock to the dome of any zombie that walks near you. Trust me, this is the first perk I grabbed throughout my entire grind when using controller. And let me tell you, it made going for critical kills mindless. Literally. When you upgrade speed coal, you get 30% faster reloads, 20% faster field upgrade recharge, and you can fire and reload while sprinting at full speed. This essentially just saves you time, making getting camos a lot faster. When you upgrade stamina up, you get faster movement speed, including backpedal speed and movement speed while aiming down sights, immunity to fall damage, equipment use while sprinting, and no sprint speed fall off. When you upgrade death perception, not only can you see zombies through walls like a casual game of Warzone, but you also get danger indicators if zombies are behind you. You gain 20% more of both types of salvage, 25% increase in armor penetration, and when fully maxed out, you can see chests and drop items and salvage through walls. Walls. When you upgrade Mule Kick, you get a lot more than the ability to carry three weapons. You have a chance to get additional crafted equipment, increased chance of zombies dropping ammo, which means basically never running out of ammo. Your weapon will reload automatically when it's stowed, and a 25% chance to keep equipment when it's used, which is perfect for hanging on to any stuns, decoys, any equipment you might use here on your grind just has a chance to stay in your inventory after use. Basically just gives you one for free. When you upgrade PhD Slider, you get immunity to environmental damage while sliding, increased slide duration, increased slide speed, immunity to self-inflicted explosive damage, very good for explosive weapons, and when falling from a large height, it'll trigger an explosion. The size and damage of the explosion increase from the higher that you fall. And for the perks, I think you should hold off on upgrading. Elemental Pop basically gives you a chance to trigger random ammo mods with every bullet you shoot, while also reducing ammo mod cooldowns and increasing elemental damage to enemies that that are weak to specific ammo mods by 50%. When it's fully maxed out, reloading near enemies will stun them, and the less ammo you have in the mag, the stronger the stun will be. This is basically Electric Cherry from older Zombies game. This is one of my favorite perks, one of my favorites to use, but it is very inefficient when grinding camos because these ammo mods can take away your kills, which in turn take away potential camos that you could be unlocking. However, if you're trying to unlock all camos for a weapon in a single game, I recommend grabbing it towards the higher rounds like high 30s, early 40s to help keep you alive. Elemental Pop becomes somewhat essential near these high rounds because even when you're down with Quick Revive, it becomes pretty hard to get a kill with that 1911 you're given. Unless you have a ray gun, you're going to need to electric cherry a zombie to get that kill to get back up and tombstone is kind of helpful when you're down and you activate this you can become a ghost and revive yourself but you can still take damage in this form and if you go down as this ghost you're done the game's over this is basically a fail safe when you don't have a self revive and you don't have quick revive it also says in the upgrades that it prevents perk decay, but from my experience with it, it only saves three perks, which you already keep when going down. So it's basically a glorified self-revive. And by glorified, I mean dog water. Now, looking at ammo mods, there is really only one you want to use in upgrade for almost all weapons, and that is Cryo Freeze. With Cryo, each bullet has a chance to slow down zombies without doing too much damage, which helps with making grinding more efficient. The slower the zombie, the easier the kill, the easier the kill, the easier the camos, you get the picture. When it's upgraded, slowed zombies zombies get slower for longer, special enemies can be slowed, and when maxed out, zombies affected by cryo when they're killed will spread the effect to five nearby zombies. The best ammo mod in the game is Shatter Blast, but it's not the best for grinding camos on weapons that you need critical kills with. Basically, Shatter Blast has a chance to deal explosive damage that, when upgraded, can destroy armor and can trigger multiple explosions, killing and knocking down zombies in its path. And trust me, it's OP as hell, but this takes away from your chances at getting more critical kills. So the only time I recommend using this ammo mod while grinding is with melee weapons, launchers, and special weapons. But I can't emphasize enough how stupidly overpowered this thing is. And lastly, weapon class upgrades are pretty simple. Just focus on upgrading whatever class you're currently working on. Most classes, when upgraded, get bonus damage and additional attachment slots. I get a lot of comments asking me how I get so many attachments on my weapons, and this is how I do it. Some weapon classes have have unique benefits when upgraded. Shotguns and pistols get boosted armor penetration. If you upgrade your melee, you get a knife instead of a gun butt when meleeing with any weapon. Also, when your melee is fully maxed out, you can heal a small amount of health 
every time you do melee damage. When upgraded, launchers and specials do bonus damage to elites and have a 25% chance to take ammo fired from the stock instead of what's currently loaded into it. And the very last thing I recommend you do before you hop in and start grinding camos is to make a class with each field upgrade and name it something that'll help you remember which is which. I say this because when you're in game, you can pause Lamal Vanguard and pick whatever class has your desired field upgrade. As long as you have at least one kill with the weapon that you're holding, it will not switch the weapon that you're using. But if you don't want to go through all that effort while you're in game, you can simply edit the class to whatever field upgrade you want. Another useful thing you can do is name your classes after challenges that you're currently working on. For example, I always forget what challenges I have to do for melee weapons when I'm grinding them in game. And since you can't check your camo progress in game, name your classes things like getting kills while an Aether Shroud or getting kills while zombies are distracted can help you remember what you're supposed to be doing without having to search up what the challenges for the weapon are. Props to the boy Silky for that tip. Now that that's all out of the way, what weapons are required to unlock Dark Aether? Well, to break it down, there isn't any specific weapons to complete, just a specific number from each class to get done. And once you complete the specified number of weapons for that class, you will receive Plague Diamond. Once you get Plague Diamond for every single class, you will unlock Dark Aether. But what order should you do these weapons in? I recommend that if you're brand new to grinding camos and zombies, you should use the weapon that you're either most familiar with or your favorite weapon. This will help you get your bearings on the mode and how camo grinding is going to go in general. You'll just get a better understanding overall. But after that, the order I recommend is melees and specials, pistols, launchers, shotguns, LMGs, assault rifles, tactical rifles, snipers, and SMGs. With this order, I try to scale it from easy classes to complete to harder ones while leaving a fun class for the end so you're not suffering on the final leg of your Dark Aether journey. Now let's go over each individual class, what weapons I recommend completing, and their difficulty rating. For the melees and specials, you need to complete one weapon from each because these classes are connected for Plague Diamond. So just just to reiterate, you need both. One melee weapon and one special weapon to unlock Plague Diamond for the both of them. Anyways, the melee weapon I recommend is just a default knife. Although there are two melee weapons that are slightly better, the E-Tool and the Wakasashi, they require you to complete challenges to unlock them, and these challenges can be very tedious to complete. But if you got them, go for it. The special I recommend completing is the M79. This has to be one of the best weapons you can use in zombies because now you can pair it with the perk PhD Slider, which eliminates all self-inflicted explosive damage. While this perk is great for this weapon, it can slow down your camo progression without you even realizing. The reason for this is even though you won't be dealing damage to yourself, the game still thinks that you are. So you will not receive jackrabbit medals if you're shooting too close to yourself. So for an easy solution to this, just shoot further away and try to take out multiple zombies at once to make your ammo count. The crossbow slash the R1 shadow hunter and the ballistic knife are also not bad choices, but I believe the M79 is better. Difficulty? Easy. For the pistols, you need to complete three of them. And the three I recommend are the Diamantes, the MP63s, and the 1911s. Notice how they're all plural? That's because akimbo pistols are busted. The Diamantes and AMPs especially. They are some of the best weapons that you can use in all of zombies because they absolutely tear cheeks. The Magnum is also a fine choice, but it has a lower ammo count and fire rate than the other pistol options. But it looks like LeBron James compared to the Marshall. Stay as far away as you can from this awful weapon. Trust me, don't ever pick up the Marshalls. Difficulty? Pretty fun. For the launchers, you only need to complete two of them, but you only really have two options, the Sigma and the RPG. The challenges for these are the exact opposite of what you would expect from them in multiplayer. Normally, they're the toughest weapons to get complete there, but in zombies, they are some of the easiest weapons to complete in the whole game. Just try to group zombies up before shooting just to save as much ammo as possible. And like the M79, keep your distance to make sure you're getting Jackrabbit medals. Difficulty? easier than you think. For the shotguns, there's two weapons you need to complete, and the two that I recommend are the Gallo SA-12 and the Hauer 77. These are some of the most powerful weapons you can use in zombies, and they are my go-to weapons. The Street Sweeper is good, but you really have to play around its slow reload speed, and the 410 Ironhide is basically a Red Rider BB gun, so I recommend sticking with the original two shotguns. Difficulty? brainless. For the LMGs, you need to complete three of them. Now, I personally don't see much of a difference between the four of them, but if I had to pick, I'd choose the Stoner 63, the MG82, and the M60. They all have pretty slow movement speed and reload speeds, but I think these ones look the coolest. Difficulty? trying to enjoy Vanguard zombies. For the assault rifles, you need to complete five of them. My choices for this class would be the Farah, the FFAR, the XM4, the AK-47, and the Groza. All these that I've picked are very well-rounded and very fast-firing ARs that you're bound to have a good time with. But really, just about any AR can get the job done. Difficulty? Long, but a good time. For the tactical rifles, you need to complete four of them. 
The four I recommend are the M16, AUG, Carve 2, and the Type 63. Almost all of these are burst rifles, which go absolutely insane and are some of the better weapons that you can use in zombies. However, the Type 63 is only a semi-auto, but I feel like it's a better option over the other non-burst tack rifle in the DMR. Difficulty? easily forgotten. For the snipers, you need to complete three of them. The snipers are the most difficult class in all of zombies to complete because of their slow fire rate and the fact that they can only collect two zombies at a time, making them very tedious to do. With this in mind, my choices for this class are the Pellington, the Swiss K31, and the LW3 Tundra, or the M82. The reason for the last two is the LW3 is a good sniper and a decent choice, but the M82 is semi-auto and, in theory, faster to grind than the LW3. But as long as you don't attempt the ZRG, you'll be fine but seriously don't touch the zrg it changes you difficulty you trying to get some bitches and for the final class the smgs require you to complete five of them the five i recommend are the ots9 the tech 9 ppsh ak-74u and the lc-10 all these have very fast fire rates and good movement speed, making them perfect for zombies. And on top of that, they have crazy high damage output and will shred almost anything in their path. Difficulty? Not too bad. Also, the camo challenges for almost all weapons that can fire a bullet are the same, with the most difficult or time-consuming one being getting 2,500 critical kills. My suggestion for this is if you're on controller, make sure you grab Deadshot, and if you're not, try to pay attention to your aim and focus on getting every possible kill as a headshot. As for the other camos, they're pretty self-explanatory, so I'll only be going over the more unique challenges for the melees and the special weapons. The camo challenges for these two are the same, but the ones that might give you a hard time are Liquid, Vintage, and Infection. For Liquid, you need to get 50 kills on enemies who are disoriented by Stun, Monkey Bomb, or Decoy. These items can be picked up as drops from zombie kills or crafted at the bench. For Vintage, you need to kill 15 enemies who are affected by Frost Blast, Ring of Fire, or while you have Aether Shroud active. While this one's not necessarily difficult, this one was difficult for me to remember to do. And for infection, you need to get 20 or more consecutive kills without taking any damage, including self-inflicted or fall damage 10 times. Anyways, you can knock all these out at the same time by putting Shatter Blast on your melee or special weapon. Then simply throw down a decoy or stun while zombies are grouped up, activate your Aether Shroud, and swing or shoot until it runs out. Now for the attachments on these weapons, I'm not going to go through each weapon in each class giving you the best build. However, I'll go over broad attachments that are on multiple guns that you should look out for that'll improve your grinding. But if there's enough demand for it, I'll make a video on each weapon class going over all their challenges and the best builds for them. But here are the attachments you should be looking out for. For optics, you should go with whatever you're most comfortable with, but I wouldn't recommend going over a two times sight. Normally, I go with the Cobra Red Dot. For muzzles, you should go with the SOCOM Eliminator. This can help with the recoil weapons while increasing the equipment drop rate from zombie kills with minimal cons to the overall weapon. For the barrel, if you plan on playing in the high rounds, pick up the Cavalry Lancer Barrel. This will give you extra armor penetration and damage, but most of the time you can get all camos for a weapon before the late 40s in rounds, so the Task Force Barrel is better to pick up for grinding. For the body attachment, I normally use the Ember Sighting Point to boost hipfire accuracy and increase the salvage drop rate. The Tiger Team Spotlight works well too. For the underbarrel, the best choice here is the Bruiser Grip. It increases your movement speed in almost all categories with no cons from putting it on. For the magazine, I recommend recommend putting on the highest capacity mag that you have on almost all weapons, but for snipers, picking up a fast reloading mag might be your best bet. For the handle, I honestly don't see much upside to adding any of them, but I normally pick the speed tape for faster ADS with no cons, or the field tape. This is the one category I don't know too much about, so if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. For the stock, I go with the SAS Combat Stock because of its boosted aim walking movement speed. This helps you avoid getting hit more often while allowing you to still aim down sights for easier headshots. Now, all you gotta do is level these weapons up. And I'll let you in on a little secret, round base has absolutely garbage XP rates. Normally, what I do to level up my weapons is to hop into a game of Outbreak. I'll use a double weapon XP token if I have one, and if I'm on my PlayStation account, I try to play with other PlayStation players for that added XP boost. When I'm in game, I'll go to events like Orta or the Black Chest event because these spawn in a lot of zombies. But what you want to do is focus on killing the zombies rather than completing the event. This is a good way to farm XP for your weapons. In about only three to six rounds of Outbreak, break farming, I'll have a weapon a high enough level to complete all the camo challenges for it. If you're looking for a more detailed explanation or demonstration, you can check out this video here of me showing off this method.
Now let's go over the best grind spots for unlocking camos. I highly recommend playing round base for this because it's the most consistent and fastest way to earn camos. The main spot I recommend is Colonel's Office on Firebase C. In this spot, zombies will run at you in a single file line with more than enough time to take them out before they can get to you. All you gotta do is position yourself on the left side of the desk near the cabinet. This is to ensure the zombies in the window to the left have to walk into your crosshair to get to you. I also recommend giving the boys in there a quick kiss for good luck as well. And as a bonus, this spot has an exit strat. All you gotta do is loop around the desk and do a big Sean and jump out the window. I recommend getting power on as well as a few perks and maybe even pack a punch before settling down to grind. But to get to the spot from spawn, all you gotta do is head up the stairs to the teleporter. Once you're through, take the left gate at the helipad, go up the stairs and cross the bridge and you'll be right there. A quick warning though, just so you're aware, sometimes manglers will get stuck in this spot by the reactor, but all you gotta do is kill them to fix the issue. But you can also use this to your advantage and go get Pack-A-Punch, pick up some perks, refill your armor, or anything you wanna do. Another spot on Firebase C that you can sit at in the earlier rounds for faster grinding is Weapons Lab, which can be found by taking the right gate at the helipad and opening this door. Once you're in here, you just gotta keep this back door closed and sit either in this corner or this corner and zombies will flood in from the main entrance in the door spawn, making for quick kills and camos but do be warned it can get pretty difficult in higher rounds in here so use it at your own risk d machina also has some good grinding spots but they're a little more difficult to survive for newer players the spots are penthouse here on top of nox just don't open this back wall and zombies will flood in another good spot that i use is down near speed cola in one of the spots that the pack a bunch parts can spawn in all you have to do to get the spot open is while you're in the dark aether head down this portal here near the crash site and the door should open up for you this portal can also be used as an exit strat 10 rounds after power is active activated just make sure you have enough points to use it my already totem has two spots you can use as well but i don't think they're as efficient one of them is up near the wonderfish machine just back up to the rope on this side and the other spot is down in power room as long as you don't open this back door forsaken doesn't really have any apparent grinding spots since the truck spawn has been nerfed but there still is this crate that you spawn on to grind at but i don't think it's a very good spot and it's not very efficient so if you have any spot suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. Anyways, I think I covered everything you need to know before grinding Dark Aether. So if this helped you or you learned something new, drop a like on it. If not, dislike. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. We put all kinds of COD content out throughout the week. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, drop a BOFA in the comments below to let me know that you did. As well as any other tips you think somebody should know when grinding for Dark Aether. But that's going to be it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Later.